Hi, everybody. When you are the most capable, you are the least able. How valuable is experience? Is experience a benefit or is it a hindrance when it comes to leadership and it comes to management? So I want to define some terminology. A visionary is someone who has ideas or an idea. A leader is someone who people follow and a manager is someone who gets things done. So when we look at these, so what are some examples of visionary leaders? Steve Jobs of Apple, Elon Musk of T Tesla and SpaceX, and Jeff Bezos of Amazon. These are people who have literally changed our world. These people, when people go to work for them, they actively compete. And all of these people have reputations of being horrible managers of people, to the point of cruelty. So if visionary leaders are not very good managers, what about managers that have vision? Okay, Tony Blair, the former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. A Michael Eisner, the former CEO and President of the Walt Disney Company. And George Lucas, the filmmaker and former a owner of Lucasfilm. When Tony Blair was elected to office in 1997, he was elected on an overwhelming a, a level of hope and goodwill. He had transformed his Labour Party into New Labour. Previously, the Labour Party had not been in power for 18 years. Despite Tony Blair actually having some significant successes in his political career. He resigned in 2007 and is widely reviled in the UK, mostly because of his tone-deaf handling of the Iraq war, but also for his corporate connections. Labour lost the next election and still is out of power. The current iteration of the Labour Party can be seen as a repudiation of everything that Tony Blair stood for. So Michael Eisner was led the Walt Disney Company in the 80s and the 90s and through into the early 2000s. He completely revitalized the company with movies such as Who Framed Roger Rabbit, with The Little Mermaid, and also The Lion King. He completely energized the theme park business with a massive expansion. He got Disney into the cruise ship business, and he created the entire concept of the Disney Broadway musical. But during this time, he also broke with his longtime collaborator, Jeffrey Katzenberg. And he also broke with Roy Disney, the brother of Walt. In 2004, the Disney shareholders, in an unprecedented move, vo voted for no confidence. And Michael Eisner resigned in 2005. George Lucas did more than anyone else to completely define the movie industry that we have today. And then 20 years later, did more than anyone else to undermine his own legacy with the widely panned prequel trilogy. He is widely criticized for having a singular vision and for not listening to the opinions of others. So if visionary leaders are horrible managers and managers with vision implode what about managers that just want to manage? Okay, we can look at Bob Iger, the current president and CEO of the Walt Disney Company. We can look at Bill Gates, the former CEO and president of Microsoft. And we can look at Tim Cook, the current CEO of Apple. Name one great product that these companies have made under this leadership that they haven't bought in. They are good, profitable companies they make good products. They don't make great products. Why is that? Why do managers, particularly those with vision, fail when those without vision succeed? Why do visionary leaders get to do whatever they want with no consequences? So this is my story. 
The period we're talking about, I had actually been in my current job for about four years. I've now been in that job for about six years. I knew all the answers to all the questions that I was asked. When someone had a suggestion, I'd already tried those things. And I had very strong feelings about that. The ghosts of what had happened in my past haunted my current interactions and the people I talked to. I anticipated the interactions of, the interactions of others. I anticipated the conversations that I was going to have, so I just didn't seek out those interactions. I overvalued my own experience. I believed my own story, my own press. The things that made me a good manager, a manager with vision, a leader, I now actively rejected because I had the experience to no longer need them. And the staff and the people I worked with, they pushed back. I became the bad guy. I became the roadblock. I became the one who would not listen. I became the manager who kept his own, his, his own feedback to himself. And I became less and less effective. I was the most capable and I was the least able. Some call this burnout. I don't. I call this not learning from the experience of others. The first step to recovery is acknowledging the problem. Interestingly enough, at this time, myself, the world traveler, missed not one, not two, not three, but four flights. <laughs> and why? Because I knew, I knew when my flight was leaving. So I didn't have to double check. It was fine. <laughs> Solving this problem is not hard. You've, I've all been this person. You just need to find them again and be aware of the trap that you're currently trying to climb out of. The tools that made you a good manager, a great leader when you started, are the same ones that allow you to continue being so. You just have to realize that the process is just as important as the result. Capability only has value if you have the ability to use it. Capability only has value if you have the ability to use it. And it's those around you, the people that you lead, that give you that ability. You ignore that at your peril. Thank you very much.